Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and thanks for checking today's video out. Just sitting in here in the car line waiting to pick up my little buddy right now and thought I'd do today's video real quick. What we're gonna talk about today, guys, is how people that have a lot of responsibilities or obligations in life are never gonna be very good at fishing or they're never gonna be good tournament fishermen. And I think this is a conversation that needs to be had. I'm gonna give you guys my opinion on it and be curious to get your guys' feedback as well. So before we get started, guys, just wanna remind you, we're just about out of time at the, uh, for the month of uh, April only. Uh, my RB2 series signature sunglasses, 30% off. Um, I'll put the solar bat link in the description if you guys are interested in getting a pair of these good glasses. But the uh, sale runs out just in a few days. So if you guys wanna get some, uh, you know, I'll put that link there. And I'd suggest these high con yellows. These are the ones that I use right here. They're really good in low light conditions and really like them quite a bit. Okay guys, I spend a lot of time, I always have for my entire life, sort of like analyzing why some people are just better fishermen than others. And th there's there's a little bit of mystique to that, but overall, I've, I've came to the conclusion that one of the biggest overriding factors is the fact that people that have a lot of responsibilities in life or obligations, they simply are not gonna be that good at fishing, <clears throat> particularly tournament fishing, because they don't have the time to put on the water. And we're gonna get into that. Now there's other factors involved. I mean, your passion and you know how much desire and drive and focus you have play a role in that but still at the same time i don't care how much desire and drive and how much you want to be a better angler or be a good tournament angler if you don't have the time to put in the dirt time spend time on the water it's never going to work out and i i got looking it's like so many of the guys i know out there that are really good anglers they're just at the top of their game where they're just they catch a lot of fish or they seem to do better than anyone else they're always at the lake and if they're not at the lake they're in a deer stand and if they're not in a deer stand they're hunting turkeys and if they're not hunting turkeys or they're, they're doing something it's like they simply don't have a lot of obligations and responsibilities and they have a tremendous amount of free time to do that that's why it's very difficult to be a good tournament angler if you've got a family especially if you've got a you know a larger size family it's just, it's difficult to be a good tournament angler if you have to take care of somebody else if you have to work to pay your bills if you got to you know spend your time in other ways other than on the water because let, let's just take it let's, let's take an example for any technique that you want to learn i don't care if it's getting good with electronics or if it's learning to pitch and flip or if it's learning how to you know, throw a, a whopper plopper or, or whatever, if it's learning to be good at deciphering seasonal patterns, the only way that you're gonna get good at that is through spending the time at it. Now, you can, you can cut down that learning curve a little bit by watching like YouTube videos and stuff, but ultimately, that's gonna only take you so far. You can't sit and watch you know, eight hours a day of YouTube videos and never go to the lake and expect to, you know, duplicate what you see on the water. It just doesn't work like that. And this is particularly true if you want to maintain success because the thing about it is like, if, if you don't, if you don't keep up with not, not necessarily the new trends in fishing, but if you don't keep up in the ever-changing world of bass behavior and how bass react to different factors such as fishing pressure you simply can't you can't perform at a high level for a long period of time and i'll, I'll use for example you know let, let's talk about live scope for example you know everybody knows my position on live scope i don't think it's a legitimate way to fish i don't i sorry if i hurt your feelings i just don't consider tournaments that are one live scope and legitimate wins they should have an asterisk next to them. I'm not taking anything away from people that win one, but it's just to me, it's like, you know, if you want to give, you know, your cleanup hitter in Major League Baseball, put him on steroids and giving him aluminum bats, it's the same thing with live scope in my opinion. But anyway, let's take live scope for example. The reason that everybody doesn't catch him with live scope is they don't have the time to put in to understand that particular technology and the fine points of it. Everybody out there that is an expert live scoper, they spend countless hours on the water trying to decipher what they're seeing, 
understanding the, the mood and the personality of the fish, being able to interpret what type of fish they are basically by how they're positioned and how they're moving. There's a lot of stuff that goes on there that can only be learned by hours and hours and days and weeks and years on the water. Or it's the same with like flipping and pitching. I can take somebody out and I can explain to them the fundamentals of flipping and pitching, but unless you've spent years and years and years understanding how flipping and pitching is an art form and how every single piece of cover you have to break it down in little bitty fine nuances and feels and ch color changes and weight changes there's so much out there that can only be learned by time on the water and if you've got a family if you've got a job that requires you to be gone if you've got to take care of your s sick mom or if, if you've got to do whatever anything that that, may, that that consumes your time you simply can't compete with those dudes that are out there i mean i've i've got friends out there that i don't know how they do it it's, it's like they're they're gone fishing or hunting every single day of the year it's like they i don't even know when they mow their grass and then i you know i know from my own standpoint about how how much time it takes just to go through life and you can't expect to be a really good fisherman unless you put yourself in position to do that so one of the things that i would advise it and i've talked about this before if you want to if you're really serious about becoming a, a, a good angler and a good fisherman you've got to formulate that pretty early on and don't get a girlfriend don't get married don't have a family don't have any obligations other than spending time on the water that's why a lot of the japanese anglers are so dominating i mean like Takahiro Mori. Takahiro Mori, he's, he's been single his whole life. He doesn't have any obligations other than learning about fishing. You know, he's completely ate up with it. He fishes when he wants, however much he wants, and doesn't have anything to time down. And ultimately, that's what you sort of have to have to uh, to rise to the top of this, this field. And if you don't have that, so, you know, if, if you're in a situation where you've got somebody else that can take that pressure off of you, like if you got... A situation where your family or, or your wife or girlfriend or whatever takes the, a big giant load off you and is accepting of what you do and is supportive and the whole all that factors together is pretty rare uh, then that's one avenue to it to, to as well but ultimately guys the the people all the all the guys that you see out there that are killing it right now on, in fish and I don't care if they're on a local level a regional level or a pro level they're the ones that have the excess time. They've got more time than other people. They don't have their obligations and responsibilities that require time. Um, they don't They don't get up in the morning and have to put in a full eight or 10 hour day working somewhere and then take care of kids at home or whatever. Um, and they just, those people, <clears throat> those people that are successful are the ones that don't have to, to deal with that. They just go to the lake and spend as much time as they want to on, on the water. So that is the reality of the situation. No, no two ways about it. I mean, that's why it's so, it's, that's why it is so difficult to rise to the top of any particular level in, in competitive fishing. I don't care if it's the BFLs or your week or, or some local team circuit you're fishing. I know guys that, that dominate on local turn on team tournaments around here and they're the same way. They, they spend more time on the lakes that they fish all the time one or two lakes than anyone that i know out there again i don't know when these guys even mow the grass they're gone fishing so much so that's the reality of the situation so um i think there there's 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 so many people out there that have the talent and they have the drive and they have the desire to be good at fishing and competitive but they simply are in a life situation that does not allow them to do that and that's why you do not see the you don't see the true talent that is in this country in professional fishing competing on that level. So much of it is just showing up. You know, a lot of the other people are just not there. It's not that it's not that way in you know other sports out there, but it is in professional fishing. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. I thought it'd be an interesting conversation, and uh, much appreciated. And we'll talk later. See you guys.